Hello, and welcome to another episode of whatever this is. Tesla videos to help people who are buying Teslas and want help. I'll come up with something better than that. This week, we are going to look at the official Tesla app. So let's go into the phone. Please avert your eyes from what can only be described as shocking email management, and instead focus on the prime piece of real estate that the Tesla app has on my home screen. I mean, that is accessible by thumbs on both hands. Now, is it actually that important? What does it do? When can you do it? Let's take a look. So obviously the first thing you're gonna to need to do is download the Tesla app from your app store and log in with your Tesla account details. Now you can do this as soon as you've placed your order, but between placing your order and picking your car up, there's not really anything else you can do with the app. But it is a good idea to get it downloaded on your phone, get logged in, and then on delivery day, once that delivery is confirmed, that's when the rest of the functionality in the app will become available. When that does happen, you're gonna to have to pair your phone with the car. So let's take a look at how to do that now. So on your Tesla option screen, you're gonna to go to locks, and then hit the little plus button on the top right. You can then open up your Tesla app and select the phone key option that says set up your phone as a key. Once you've done this and hit start, it will begin searching for the car. And once it's found it, it will ask you to place your key card on the center console to confirm. As soon as you've done that, you'll get a message on your app to say it's been a success and you'll also see on your Tesla screen that your phone has been added in addition to your key cards. Okay so first things first the overall layout of the screen top left you have the settings cog top right you have the loot box that is much less exciting than you'd imagine I can promise you that. In the middle the name of the car underneath the battery percentage and underneath that its current state that will change to driving when you when you're driving but I mean, you don't really need to know that you're driving the car below that will display your model of the car and this is actually quite cool if you open the left hand door the left door on here will show as as open and it will be tailored to your exact model so if you've got the aero wheels that's what you'll see on here and if you've got it in white you'll see a white car instead of a gray one Below that you have three quick access buttons. You have the climate controls, the opening of the frunk, and the locking and unlocking of doors. The state of the padlock there will show whether or not the doors are locked. Beneath that you then have a whole host of options which we'll go through one by one. So back to the top, we'll start with the settings on the top left, the settings cog. Inbox, I mean this is your Tesla inbox which they will send you important updates. I mean, I've got none, apart from one telling me that they'll send me important updates. Secondly, your loot box. So this is what we saw on the top right hand of the main screen. If you click into this, as I say, a loot box makes it sound fun. It's actually just sharing your referral link. You can click to share your referral link, which will copy it to the clipboard or give you the various options to send it around to your friends. Refer contacts, actually ask for permission to see all the contacts in your phone so you can essentially spam people with I've got a Tesla would you like a Tesla as well and my referrals gives you a list of referrals of which pretty sure at the moment I have zero so oh, wait a minute it says ordered on the 18th which is as I'm recording today uh, doesn't say who, doesn't have a name. Maybe I've got a referral. Brilliant. Sorry, just a very quick post-production interruption. If you are thinking of buying a Tesla and you fancy making me smile like a Cheshire cat, then please use my referral link that is in the description. If you place your order through that, both of us will receive 1,000 free supercharger miles. Thanks. Um, but that's pretty much all you can do with a loot box. So as I said, not quite as exciting as a loot box may sound. Next up, accounts. So you can watch the video guides. The contact just shows your contact information. 
excellent. And then get support just redirects you to the Tesla website's FAQs. I mean, great. And then notifications. This will let you set what notifications you get sent for the car. Um, so, select the vehicles. This is just my vehicle that it's tagged to. Car alarm. So, do you want to be notified when the car alarm goes off? You probably want that one on. Charging started. I've got that switched off. Charging interrupted. It will tell you when the charging gets interrupted. And charging complete. It will tell you that. Um, supercharging notifications. You'll always get notified when you're at a supercharger. Mainly because it wants you to know as soon as you're finished so you can get out of the way and let someone else use it. Software updates, whether or not you want to be notified. And summon updates, now I don't have those switched on because I don't have summon, I don't have the full self-drive. Um, so there will be options in this that we can't go through, but obviously you've got those three if you do have summon and you want to switch them on. Then the final two options, Face ID, whether or not you want to use Face ID or perhaps on non iPhones this will be whatever that phone uses to log in other than putting a pin or, or using a normal login and calendar sync whether or not you want to sync your phone calendar to the car. Down at the bottom you can sign out from the app and then it will just tell you who you're logged in as and what version of the app you're running. Now I've already covered the loot box you can click on the battery percentage and this will tell you the current state of the battery it will let you open or close the charge port depending on what the current state is and it will also tell you any nearby superchargers you can also use this screen to set your maximum charge level so you can put it to back to maybe 80 percent and when you're charging much like the screen in the car it will tell you how long is remaining and what the current percentage is Okay, so quick access buttons. We have the climate control, so you can click onto this and it will basically just switch on the climate in the car to whatever you have set. We'll go through that in more detail in a second on the climate section, uh, but for now this just says on or off. Secondly, the front operation, you can click and it will say this will remotely open your front trunk. You can click yes or no. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I'll have to go back outside and close it again. You can also, as I said before, unlock and lock the door. And whatever state it's in will just be shown with the padlock. Underneath here, software update. There's nothing to click here. This is just as a notification telling me that there is a software update to download the next time I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Phone key connected. We saw before how to connect the phone key. Um, now this just gives you, if you click on the little I button, just advice if you're having trouble to say turn off your Bluetooth and then turn it back on again and for best results don't force close your app. You can also use the screen to forget the vehicle if you want to reset the app completely or you want to get rid of it. Okay so on to climate. At the moment this tells you what the interior temperature is of the car and what you have your climate set to when you do turn it on. Now using the turn on climate here We'll do exactly the same as the main button from here you can also add the heated seats on if you want to at the various levels by turning the temperature up you'll notice that the color of the arrows changes from blue to cooling to red to heating you can also hit the screen button to say either high or set a temperature okay so controls now this is all the remainder of the controls that you can use when you're outside the car. So vent, this will lower all four windows just a crack to basically let the car vent and let some air in. You can obviously then press it again to put them back up again. Unlock and lock does exactly the same as the quick access button on the main screen. Flash, flashes your lights. Honk, honks the horn. Start, now if you actually have start you actually have to say Tesla wants to use Face ID to allow keyless driving without typing in a password. Now I'm not going to do that for now but basically it lets someone else drive the car if you're not there. You've also got access to open the front boot as you have on the main screen in addition to the boot itself. Obviously if you click either of those you have to go and shut them again so I'm not going to press it for now. It does give you a confirmation though so you don't just get it at the click of a button you do have to confirm that. 
Okay, valet mode, we've been through what that is in my video on the touchscreen tutorial, but basically it's if you're dropping the car off and you want to restrict access for most of the functionality, you can put valet mode on. Sentry mode, switching that off and on. Um, I don't have it switched on at the moment because it's parked somewhere where I can pretty much see it. Um, but obviously you can switch that on from here. Speed limit mode, again, another option that's available in the car. Just does what it says on the tin. You can limit the speed to a certain miles per hour. Okay, charging, we've already seen, does exactly the same as clicking the battery at the top. Location. This just gives your current location on a map. Obviously you are the blue dot, the car is the red dot. You can switch this to a satellite view. And you can also home in on yourself or the car. Very exciting stuff. Now, upgrades. And this lets you upgrade your car at the touch of a button. You can, on my car at least, boost the acceleration by half a second or 1,500 pounds. And I could add on the full self-drive capability for seven grand. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, this does tell you what you have purchased in the past, if anything. It lists autopilot, but obviously that comes as standard. And then finally, we have the service button. Now, this is where you can book yourself in for a service if you have got some issue with the car. Click through and find your problem. Hit next, and this will take you through to the booking system. You can describe it, upload photos, and get yourself booked in for a service. At the bottom here, we just have the current miles done, your VIN, and the version of software that the car is currently running. The one other thing you can do in the app is if you swipe the car to the right, you get lots of great information about the Tesla Powerwall. So if you're thinking about getting the Powerwall installed, this tells you everything you need to know um, and you can use it to request a quote. Okay, another quite short one this week, but it was something that I was looking for when I first got a Tesla, a quick guide as to how you use the app and, and what it does. So hopefully you found it helpful too. If you have, please hit the like button on the video below. And if you do like the series in general, please also hit the subscribe button. That really helps at the moment just as I'm getting started. And honestly, it makes my day to see a new person subscribe. So please do do that if you like the channel. If there's anything else in particular you'd like to see me cover, please let me know. I'll happily look at that and create a video on it in future weeks. So yeah, anything you put down in the comments, I'll get back to including any other questions. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.